Hello and welcome to Theatre Reviews. It's Paul Seven. I'm here at Soho Place to see Brokeback Mountain. Brokeback Mountain tells the story of a forbidden love that lasts a lifetime. And the stage version by Ashley Robinson, based on the original short story by Annie Prue, is superb at conveying both its romance and its heartbreak. Unfortunately, it also ended my love affair with Soho Place Theatre. I keep watching and I'll tell you why. But first, may I ask, if you like these video reviews, please subscribe. It'll help the channel grow and you'll be the first to know about my latest reviews. My disappointment wasn't with the play itself, nor the acting, nor the songs written by Dan Gillespie Sells and sung by Eddie Reader. No, it was the production which just didn't work in the round. And so her place, as you will probably know from my rave reviews of Medea and Marvelous, is a theatre in the round. It's as if this was a play looking for a proscenium arch or studio theatre, but had to settle for Soho Place while in denial that the audience is on all four sides. When you perform a show in the round, you need to keep at least one actor facing the audience as much as possible. But the unquestionably talented director Jonathan Buttrell took some strange decisions. The two main protagonists regularly huddled in one corner of the stage by a campfire with their back to two-thirds of the audience. There was a tent that blocked some sight lines for a while and they even threw in a kitchen sink. The latter rising out of the floor on one side of the stage for a number of domestic scenes and blocking the view for those of us on that side of the stall's front row. One of my friends who was at the performance said he felt he'd seen a good play about plumbing. I still don't know who Alma remarried. But then again, I got a great view of the pained looks passing between Ennis and Alma as they stood at the sink, which three quarters of the audience must have missed. Tom Pye is the brilliant award-winning designer of My Neighbour Totoro, but on this occasion, his set seemed to ignore the needs of an in-the-round production. I can't say who was responsible, but I do feel somebody should have looked at this production from all angles and pointed out the restricted views. Thus assuming they care that people who've paid good money to see the show can actually see the show. And yes, I did buy my ticket. Anyway, you'll almost certainly be familiar with the story thanks to the film. Two cowboys, Jack and Ennis, are assigned the job of looking after a flock of sheep on a remote mountain. They gradually get to know and like one another until one cold night they huddle together in a tent and desire takes over. Nothing untoward about that, except this is Wyoming in 1963, a time and place where homosexuality is not only illegal, but liable to get you killed. And that explains why neither admits their homosexuality until their bodies touch. Here and now, gay love stories are commonplace, but even today, a gay man will have come across prejudice and threats, and it's a timely moment to be reminded of the effect of homophobia, given the rise in legal discrimination against homosexuality in some US states and the introduction of the death penalty in Uganda for what the law calls aggravated homosexuality. Although Jack suggests they could live together, Ennis holds back, tries to maintain a sham marriage and lives for occasional meetings with Jack in remote places. I'm assuming you've seen the film or read the story, so I can say that Jack takes more risks than Ellis and with dreadful consequences. The play tells the story with a deep understanding and a superb ear for dialogue. It's hard to believe this is Ashley Robinson's theatrical debut. And the two main actors wear their parts like gloves. I felt their love and their pain. Mike Feist with crooked good looks is the reckless extrovert Jack. Lucas Hedges is the shy Ennis. They are believable as an affectionate couple. I remember a head resting casually on a chest that caught perfectly their comfort in each other's company. Emily Fern was convincing as Ennis is bemused and badly done by wife. Another victim of the situation who is by turns sad, understanding and angry. I wasn't sure about the presence of an older Ennis, 
He does appear in the prologue to the short story to kick it off, as it were, but I was puzzled by his continuing appearances on stage without giving any commentary. It may have been a way of making clear that Ennis could never come out, so had lost his only love, but in practice, like the sink, he just got in the way. There was a kind of commentary in Dan Gillespie Sell's songs. Now, you may know his work from the band The Feeling or the musical Everybody's Talking About Jamie. Here, he echoes American country and Western music with songs that are plaintive and full of deep emotion, providing a moving counterpoint to the on-stage action and beautifully performed by Eddie Reader and the slightly off-stage band. At least they didn't get in the way. Brokeback Mountain is a terrifically written well-acted play. Let down by the production. I hope you found this review useful and hopefully entertaining. If you did, please subscribe and you'll be the first to know about my future reviews. And uh, if you want to read my reviews, please visit theatre.reviews. And you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for watching.